An old uh, ginger whiskers standing out all round his face. Yes, Sergeant. Eight o'clock last night, lying outside the co-op doorway in Market Street. Billy Bottle. Should I have necked him? Well, perhaps moved him on. <laughs> he was paralytic drunk. We had two. Doorway of all of us. Well, that's a real treat, Arnold. Thanks very much indeed for letting me know. I appreciate it. Thanks again, Ta. Oh, boy. Right, lunch on me. Where are we going? Nowhere, we're too busy. Right, son, go to Mumford's and throw caution to the winds. I'm not expecting no change. How much? £800 for a stair carpet, not including fitting? Good Lord, where do you think I live? Alton Tower? No, thanks. I'll get another estimate somewhere else. Yes, come in. Oh, sorry, Joseph. I thought you were a carpet salesman. Uh, no, ma'am. I just thought you... Eight hundred pounds for a stair carpet. Who do they think I am? The chief constable? Sorry, yes, Joseph. What can I do for you? I've just had a call from a friend in the court's administrator's office. He thought we'd like to know that this morning Mr Justice Willard Jones sent Ernie Gates down for 12 years. Oh, well, yes, thanks. Always good these days to hear somebody getting what they deserve, ma'am. Hmm. Quite a whack, 12 years, isn't it? Protection of society, ma'am. Very important, I think, that. Well, this is Barbara. Barbara, this is Colin. This is Sheila. Hello, Barbara. Hello. Yes, well, I'll... Uh... Would you like a cup of tea? That's some maid. Yes, Barbara. Oh, Tom, you stop and have one with Sheila. Hmm? I'll take you upstairs and show you your room then, Barbara. Eh? You see your father sent to prison for 12 years, is it? Letting a girl of her age be in court. She wanted to. So how long is she going to be here? Alison didn't say. Not to me, no. To you? No, Sheila, she didn't. No. Not to Barbara. Well, it is only temporary until Alison decides what's best to do. Oh, yes. Sorry, Tom, I know it's not your fault. But it's typical of Alison, isn't it? Doesn't matter how inconvenient it is for anyone else. Are you overcrowded? No, I didn't mean that. I meant how it would affect her. All the other girls here are long stay. At least they know that much. They've got that security. I don't like us being used as a staging post. You'd like me to make that point to Alison when I see you? I can make my own points to Alison, thank you, Tom. Hey, I thought we were supposed to be friends. I know I haven't seen you both for a while. Sorry. How are things between you and Cole? Yes, all right. I know you and Colin are old friends, Tom. Has he...? Sure, I haven't, I haven't seen Colin for months. More tea? Yeah. Mrs. Darby. 
Oh, how, how do you do? I'm Jeff Todd. Mr. Todd. Well, thank you for seeing me. I'll not, I'll not keep you long. I just wanted some guidance. Well, I, I took a big risk giving evidence in court. If it hadn't been for me, Ernie Gates wouldn't have got anything like 12 years. Yes, ma'am. Well, he's a very dangerous man, Mrs. Darnley. No. He's got connections. Perhaps. Well. Well, the point is, I, I think I need protection for a while. I don't think you can refuse, can you? I think so, Mr. Todd, yes. But just to make sure, I'll inquire. Come back later in the room. I've always had a soft spot for Billy Bottle myself. Mm. These are all you got, son? Yes, Sarge. Shandy goes well with these. You should have bought some. Sarge. Mm. Oh, pasty's good. One spare. Help yourself, ma'am. Sarge. You only wanted one, didn't you? Sarge. A little celebratory lunch, ma'am, over at Ernie Gates. I'm Billy Bottle. Billy Bottle? Thought he was dead, don't tell me. Careful, Mum. Mm. He's um, resurrected himself, you might say. Mm, I don't know. David saw him last night in a shop doorway in Market Street. Did you move him on, David? Of course, Mum. We're not clean on vagrant alcoholics in Hartley. I'll tell you what goes nicely with these. Shandy. Well, I paid for the pasties, didn't I? So, not very nice the experience for you either. Did Barbara say anything to you at all? Not one word the whole way there. She couldn't be in a better place. Sheila and Colin will help her if anyone can. Sorry. Mrs. Cowan. Uh-huh. I'll tell them I'm tied up just now, would you, Mary? Thanks. How much you like to be there? Sheila been getting at you. No, no. And you really must learn to be a better liar. She's already been on the phone to me about it. Well, I'd be interested to know, too. At her age, in her circumstances, I'd think fostering would be best. But it'll take me a day or two to find exactly the right place. Did it cross anyone's mind that her father was likely to get a heavy prison sentence? Hmm. But not that her mother would seize the opportunity to abandon her and run off with someone else. Where's she gone? Blackpool? What would you do? If I found her mother? Hmm. Well, she'd be prepared to talk about it. Tell her the girl is her responsibility and she's got to accept it. Oh, well, that wouldn't be much help to Barbara, would it? Blinding in like that straight off. Likely to put her back up straight away. Oh. Am I learning? Are you? I hope. So, what about it then? Is this the time? Time for what? Well, when you joined us, presumably Alan mentioned the subject of your going on for training and proper social work qualification after you'd had some basic field work experience, did he? Uh, yes, he did say that would be expected, yes. So, what about it? Well, I'm not sure I'm ready for it. Experience-wise, personally, or what? All that, especially the all what. Think it over. But to be quite honest, Alison, I'm not sure that it's right for me, really, social work. So, going for training would help you find out. Oh, but it's a two-year course. I'm not even sure if I can afford it. Oh, it's not for me to make the final decision, but I think there's a good chance the department might second you. Well, what would that mean? I mean, in financial terms? Well, we'd pay your training costs, give you a grant for books and so on, pay you a salary. Not what you're getting now, but a salary. Let's see. Your wife's working, isn't she? Oh, you mean, could I swallow my pride? Yes. All right, if you like. Oh, well, I'm only three generations older than you, Alison. I'll talk to her. You will need some information. Let's see what I've got. Professional training for social work, finance for social work students, courses leading to the certificate of qualification in social work, sets for leaflet one, three, two, two stroke one. Enough.
Would you like to help me? If I do the potatoes, how about you doing the cabbage? I hate you. Yes, Barbara? But I hate my mother most. Man in the house. Who's speaking? Would you hold on, please? Phone, she. If you don't feel like eating anything, you just go and sit in the sitting room and watch the telly, eh? Whatever you like. I'll bring you some sandwiches later if you're still hungry, okay? Okay. It's all right, love. Things will work out. You'll see. Well, how do you feel about it? Stop sounding like a professional social worker. <laughs> well, it is what matters. Yeah, the trouble is, I don't really know. I wonder whether to talk it over with Colin. Oh, do you mean at Marina House Community Home? Chap was married to what's her name? Mm. Yeah, good idea. Why not? Two year courses. Mature non graduates are welcome. Mm -hmm. Experience in social work is an admission requirement. Manchester, Liverpool. Either of those would be okay. Near enough. See if they gave me a place. So I wanted a place. Look, let's talk about it some more. What are the pros and cons? Trying to list them might help. So, first of all, in favour of you going on a course that would end up with you having a proper, recognised qualification. Number one. Afterwards, there'd be a whole new range of jobs open to you that you couldn't even be considered for as you are now. Number two, money. The salary you'd be able to earn then would be far. What's the matter? Are you sure you're not a professional social worker? Listen. Suppose he's entitled to protection. If he hadn't turned Queen's evidence, he'd probably gone down for 12 years himself. So, that was his protection. Does he seriously think Ernie Gates has enough influence from inside the nick to have him sink to? I don't know what Todd seriously thinks. Whatever it is, it's enough to have got him inside a police station voluntarily. Missy's just come through from Moore Top, Sergeant. Like it passes again today. Don't have anything else. Savoury mince mutton pancakes. Pasties. Pasties. Oh, well. Did you know Ernie Gates had a daughter? I think I did hear something said about it once by somebody. Only since she's never been in any trouble. Barbara Gates, 14, picked up at Moortop Bus Depot at 1am by woman police constable McKee and returned to Mariner House Community Home for Girls. Well, thanks for letting us know. Oh. Oh, yes. Just a minute. Oh, sorry. No, thanks. Barbara, I have a statutory duty. That means that I've no choice. I've got to do it. To look after you and take care of you and find you somewhere to live. And I put you here just to begin with, with Colin and Sheila, until I could sort out one or two possible places and then come and have a chat with you about what you thought you'd like best. But you don't have to stay here any longer at all if you don't want to. If I found, say, an ordinary family in an ordinary house, would you stay there instead with them for a few days? I do have to know, Barbara. 
but much sooner we worked out together where you were going. But if we can't, then I shall have to apply for a court order, which means that I have the power to decide on my own what to do with you, whether you like it or not. I'm not going to stop anywhere. Well, you're old enough to understand this. If you go on running away, you'll only be brought back. And then I shan't have any choice but to put you somewhere that you can't run away from. Have you had a chat with Sheila about this at all? No. Well, we've not really had the time yet, have we, Barbara? Look, I must go and see one of the other girls for a few minutes. Why don't you and Sheila have I want a to little... talk to you. Yes, all right, then. On our own in private. Right, well, I've got to go and see about... So I'll just... Right. OK. I don't want to have to stop here. Well? Todd, Mum. Geoffrey Todd. Yes? I think I know why he feels he needs protection. Yeah, particularly, I mean. Yes? And uh, Sergeant Beck's just made a telephone call to one of his contacts, too, to check it. It's not absolutely definite, but it certainly sounds like it. I hadn't put two and two together, as you might say. Well, I'm going to Foxcroft to look at some stair carpets, see if you can have got to the point by the time I get back. It's his wife, Mum. Whose wife? What is? Ernie Gates, ma'am. It's true this is hard work. What about Ernie Gates's wife? The whisper is that Todd was messing about with her while Gates was in custody waiting to come up for trial. And now he's gone down, they've shacked up together permanently. Which would be a good reason for Todd thinking he was in need of some protection. Oh. Well, all right. Let's ask Mr Todd to come back and have another little chat with us, shall we? Mm. Oh, John. Cheers. No, oh, thanks for coming. Did you press for time? Oh. oh, no, just just a bit cold, that's all. Well, you met my wife before, haven't you? Yeah, I think so, once. She's in the police force, isn't she? Mm, she says you try and slip in, join us for a quick one. Ah, oh, good. Well, we wanted some advice. Well, I did. So I thought, who better than an old mate who's been in it a lot longer than I have? Social work. Oh. <laughs> well, Alison thinks it's time that I was going on for proper training. Yeah. And if I did, well, the department would probably, or possibly, second me. Well, jump at it. Yeah? Well, ten years' time, you'll not even get the sort of job you've got if you're not qualified. All you'd be in with a chance for would be T-boy. Probably not even that if you didn't have a certificate. Are you qualified? No. No. Sheila is there, which would be a great help. You mean will be? If we separate, she'll be able to get a good job more or less anywhere. I'm sorry. I didn't realise it got to that stage. Well, are you going to take your own advice? Get qualified? Not sure. I'm not all that keen on some of the other people in social work at present. Alison. No, oh, I'm not being specific. It's just that... Uh, Oh, look, Tom, I'm sorry. I've just remembered I want to get a bunch of flowers for Sheila before they close for lunch. Um, look, the other half, a quick one. No, no, I'm no. all right, no. It looks like Jean's going to be late anyway. Oh. Birthday, is it? What? Uh, oh, no. No. Oh, please say I'm sorry. Give your wife my regards. Oh. Uh, just because it might not suit one person, I mean, that doesn't mean it might not be completely different for somebody else. I mean it, Tom, if you've got the chance. You take it. Mrs. Granger's got two children, a boy and a girl. I think one's six, the other's about eight. Mr. Granger died last year. I think you'll like them. I think they'll like you, but it's only for two or three days to begin with, okay? 
Right then, come on. Oh, look, look, I mean, no, all right, all right, it's not illegal, is it? I mean, it's not against the law. It happens every day. You meet somebody, you fall for each other, and pumph, that's it. Sounds really world shaking, pumph. I'm not a very emotional man. Well, I'm not a very emotional woman. But I hope I could inspire someone a bit more than that. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm after this job. This is a good chance I'll get it, and if, if I do, well, it'll be in Norwich. We'll, we'll be moving there. Good. Because we can't give you protection, Mr. Todd. Not for moving in with someone else's wife when he's been sent to prison. So my advice would be to do what you're thinking of doing. Run. Hard. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. It's not Ernie Gates' wife. I mean, if it was, there'd be no problem. I mean, she, she's a write-off. Dead last. Nobody knows where she is or cares. It's not his wife. It's his girlfriend. Oh, well. I could see that's much more serious, yes. Yes, it is. So? But hard luck. Sorry, no. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this up. I'm going to take this up with somebody higher up. My oh, God. Don't you ever get the feeling you've never really lived? Oh, I was supposed to be meeting Tom. Oh, well. Thanks, Mary. Yes, ask him to come straight in, would you please? Yes, Alison? Well, do tell me what it's all about. I get home after lunch to find that you've taken Barbara away and told Sheila to tell me to phone you immediately I get in. I do, and what I get is a message saying you want to see me at four o'clock. It's now precisely one minute past four. Here I am. You idiot, Colin. You idiot. What did she say to you? Who? Alison, before she took Barbara away. I told you nothing. Only for Barbara? her. Barbara? No. So you don't know what this is all about? No, Colin, I've no idea what it's about. Ba Barbara has made an allegation about me. Oh, no, Colin, no. How could she? Yes, sir. I'll give her the message as soon as she comes in. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Hartley to 8018. Hartley to 8018. Again last night? Where well, this time? I never all broke down beds with a canal. Did you move him on, David? I was building the rain. Just move my bit further under out of the way. Oh, you better not tell the boss that. And look, son. Next time you trip over him, nick him. 
At least that way he'll get a nice warm night in the cells and get some breakfast to summer. Sarge. How old is he anyway? Billy Bottle. How old's Billy Bottle, George? Oh, it's hard to say with all those whiskers on him. Must be 40 now, though, mustn't he? 40? <laughs> but he looks more like 70. Yeah, it gets you like that when you're as far gone as he is. Morning, ma'am. Morning. Uh, anything further come through about Scott Nevins, George? Uh, no, nothing yet, ma'am. Oh, uh, Chief Inspector Charles says, uh, would you phone, please, when you come in? Yeah, OK. I remember reading this article in the Clarion once. Apparently, there was this young police cadet got interested in vagrant alcoholics, so they gave him a month's leave to go and live with them, really study them. But I think after three weeks... I wonder if they give me time off to go and study the social problems of the Bahamas. No, he was uh, whispering. Go and have a talk with Father Brian and St. Jude. Who? Someone tried to break into the Belly ball when I've propped him up. What? Nothing you can make any sense out of. He keeps his head down like that all the time. But anyway, though, you're happier here than you were at Mariner House. Yes, of course. So. Who gave you that? Mrs. Granger? Barbara, I'm going to say something to you. And before you say anything in reply at all, please think very carefully. If what you said about Colin is true, he's going to lose his job. Do you want to think about it for a minute? Sorry? Colin, Colin. Take your coat off, eh? Now, make yourself comfortable. Sit down. I don't often get home at lunchtime, but I was near and you know, fed up in pubs and places, don't you? Yeah. Did you want it for smoke? No, of course not. Yeah, so what do I owe the pleasure? Yeah. Another pep talk about getting qualified? I'm in need of your help, Tom. Oh, well, ask anything. Yeah, just, you know that. That, um, that girl you brought to the house the other day, Barbara Gates. Oh, yeah, how's she getting on? When you brought her over in the car, did, uh, did anything happen, like, be between you and her? I mean, like what? Why? Oh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's OK. I just just thought it might have. That would have helped me, you see. Uh, poor little kid. She was really down. She'd been in court, you she's, know, when her uh, father was... She's made an allegation about me. Hey? <laughs> oh, ridiculous. Well, it's her word against yours. Well, who's going to believe that? Alison believes it. She's taken the kid away. I've been suspended from work. Alison insists I resign. You what? Oh, come on, man, that's preposterous. Maybe. Can't do a thing about it. God. I can't credit it. <sighs> well, maybe the middle of the day, but I could do with the brandy. Sure, you could too. I'm sorry, Colin, but uh, she's lying, isn't she? Of course she is. Hartley Police. Hold on. Scott and Evans for you, Mum. Well, what colours have you got in stock? Is that all? Just those three? Oh, all right. Thank you. I'll have a think about it. Honestly, it'd be easy to take the stairs out and put a lift in. Just it? For the moment, ma'am, yes. Not what you call cast iron evidence to make an arrest on, is it? We've reason to hope we may soon have a statement from um, an informant that should tie it all up neatly. Informants? What would we do without them? Oh, that reminds me. Chief Inspector Charlesworth says we can tell Mr. Todd there will be no ring of armed policemen around his house, or for that matter, not even one. But any patrol car happening to find itself in the vicinity might occasionally cast an eye. I'm sure that'll fill him with total confidence, ma'am. And when you tell him, don't wrap it up. Just let him stew gently in his own... Do you think it shows, Joseph, that I don't much like Mr Todd? Well, just a little. 
Still, like you say, we can't really do without people like him. Though in his case, you do seem to dislike him rather more than most, if I may make so bold. It's got nothing to do with him being an informer, though. It's because he's a snake. Ah. Yes, I see him. No, you don't see him, Mum. But as we're on the subject, I'll tell you. Six years ago, he got hold of some letters a friend of mine had been indiscreet enough to write to someone who wasn't her husband. He asked her for money, and when she said she couldn't pay any, he'd better do his damnedest. That's exactly what he did do. The very next morning, there were copies of the letters on her husband's desk when he arrived at work. He jumped in his car to drive back home, much too fast, skidded at a roundabout and went straight under a container lorry. Was there no way of nailing Todd? She told me, but he'd been far too clever for there to be any evidence. So she was left a widow with three children and the feeling for the rest of her life that it was her fault her husband had been killed. He doesn't know, I know, though. Some things are better kept quiet, aren't they? Till an appropriate time. You've really asked for his resignation? You really have? Well, I think it's monstrous. I think it's absolutely downright monstrous. I'm sorry, Tom. I've told you already I'm not going to discuss it. Well, I'm sorry too, Alison, but I am. Oh. Now, look, you can't just turn it off like that. It's not Colin's idea for me to come and see you, you know. This is my idea. I protest about his treatment in the strongest possible terms, I protest. Now, look, I took her all the way from the court to Mariner House in the car. She could have made up any fairy story she liked about me. If she had, would I have been asked to resign? Tom, I really am very busy, so do you mind? Alison, you've crushed the man. He's absolutely shattered. Now, look, Alison, I shouldn't say this, perhaps, but... Well, he and Sheila are going... Their marriage is going through a very rocky patch just now. I know that, yes. Well, he's not going to have any chance at all of surviving now, is he? That is something that only Colin and Sheila can work out between them. Oh, you're just going to stand aside and say it's nothing to do with you? I thought social work was supposed to be about caring for people. Tom, I am not going to discuss other people's personal affairs. Oh, that's marvellous, marvellous. Well, are you saying there's not even going to be some kind of inquiry so he can defend himself? Just got to resign, that's it, finish. I hope there'll be no inquiry. Barbara is unsettled and disturbed enough as it is. Well, there! There you are, then. That's exactly the point. Barbara is unsettled and disturbed. And yet you'll kick a man out of his job just because somebody like that... Mrs Cowan. Yes, Mary, tell them I'll be along there in a moment. Thank you. I'm sorry. I have to go. I'm due at a case conference. Excuse me. So this is what you want me to train to become like, is it? An iceberg, not a flicker of warmth or feeling for someone showing anywhere. I should sit down and calm down, Tom, if I were you. Shall I ask Mary to bring you in a cup of tea? No. No, thanks. as long as we have just to play silly games. Tell me what the matter is, please. Now, don't you start giving me orders. I'll not only give you orders, I'll knock your block off, Sunshine, if you go on behaving like a great big kid. Please forgive me. I've had a very hard... I'm really sorry. I've been to see Alison today. Yes? About... Oh, uh, well, it's a... Confidential matter to do with somebody in the department. Confidential means you're not going to tell me? I can't very well. Well, not at the moment, no. It's just that somebody I know and like has been accused of an in... of misconduct. Alison's decided straight off that he's guilty and he's demanded his immediate resignation. Oh. I mean, it's the most unfair, the most outrageous piece of high-handedness I've ever heard of. I go and try and talk to her about it, and she flatly refuses even to discuss it. And has she got this resignation? I don't know if she's got it in writing, she's got mine. Pardon? That's why I came home early, to write the letter. Caught the afternoon post, to get it in the morning. Tom, you've what? Well, I suppose I'd better be going. 
can go out the back way in case anyone sees me. You've been suspended from duty, but you can come and see me. No one can stop you doing that. How are Anne and Derek? Are they all right? Mm, fine. Good, <laughs> sorry. You've been taking pills again? It helps. Did you tell them about it, Anne and Derek? No. I just said things were bad between you and me again. We needed a few days apart to think things over. Oh, thanks. Well, it's true in a way. I have been thinking things over, she. Good. Well, let's not have any recrimination. Let's just draw a line under it. OK, it's over, it's finished, that's it. I'm too tired to even try to fight any more. You, Alison, I'm sorry, I just can't be bothered anymore. You're so up to your eyes and tranquilizers. You're yes, not giving yourself okay, much of a chance, she, are it's you? It's all right. I thought I'd go back to Hull. All right. I want you to know this, Colin. Wherever you go, I'm going to be there with you. Really? Oh? Well, yes, I see. Not even being given the chance to defend himself. That's what gets me. Job is marriage all down the drain on the, the word of a 14-year-old girl. Hmm. And Alison would say absolutely nothing to you. She just stonewalled. Nothing at all. Ask yourself why. Well, it's perfectly obvious why, isn't it? She's got about as much human feeling as that. Are you defending her? No. I'm trying to think of the position Alison's in. Never mind about the position Alison's in. What about the position Colin's in? Mm. Exactly. What do you mean? What are you saying? Look, I'm only guessing. But has it struck you that she won't say anything to you because there's nothing she can say that wouldn't be a total breach of confidence and reveal something to you about him that she couldn't even so much as drop a hint about it to you, could she? What do you mean? I mean, mean for example, there might have been a previous incident, something like that. It's not impossible, is it? Yes, but... Oh, no, good Lord, you had to make it worse. I mean, if that was the case, you'd be forevermore at the mercy of the slightest whisper. Yes. So you'd think he'd make absolutely certain that he never allowed himself to be in a situation where anyone could allege anything, wouldn't you? Oh, God. They don't let you have your letters back when you post them, do they? Oh, well, never mind. I never liked social work much anyway. I was never very good at it either. I was too ready to chuck me away to boat. I'll get it. Hello. Oh, hello, Sheila. How are you? No, of course I'm not too busy to talk. Time last night. The accident was reported as occurring at 2015, ma'am. In Vernon Street, you say? Yes, ma'am, at the top. The corner where the traffic lights are by the church. The car mounted the pavement and crushed him against the wall. He was dead on arrival at the hospital. Oh. Well. So, that's the end of Mr. Geoffrey Todd. Yes, ma'am. In a way, it, uh, well, solves a few matters, you might say, doesn't it? Silly. I can't help it, but I do. I feel a bit guilty somehow, do you? No, I can't say I do, to be honest. No, not in the slightest. And with respect, I don't think you should either. It did come and ask us to give him protection. There was no way we could have protected him against being knocked down and killed in a road accident. If it definitely was an accident, was it? I would say so fairly certainly, yes. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. How's that? 
The driver of the car that killed him was 73, and she's in hospital herself, with a broken arm and extensive injuries to her head. Oh. Mm. Yes, one. I don't feel glad about it, though. And I always thought I would do if something happened to him. Do you know what I do feel, Joseph? Cheated. That's not really very nice, is it? Oh, sorry, Tom. Oh. Honestly, some of those magistrates just go on and on and on. Uh, hasn't Mary given you a cup of coffee? Um, Please. No. Uh, well, yes, uh, she did offer me what one. What can I do I... for you? Well, I've come to say, can I have it back? Of course, yes. Whatever it is, I've got a terrible memory. But what is it that I've got that's yours? Well, that letter, the one I posted yesterday. Oh, well, you know what the post's like. Oh. Oh, would you do me a favour? When you do get it, give it me back without opening it. Why? Is it rude? Well, you could say that. Another word would be intemperate. Another one would be rash. Another one would be offensive, and another one would be very, very stupid. Wow. Well, we all fly off the handle now and again, don't we? I know I do. I also wrote I was handing in my notice. I'd like that to be ignored too, please, if possible. It is ignored. I never took it seriously for a moment. Oh, that's all right, then, so long as the... Oh, you said you hadn't had it. Oh, well, just now, while you were speaking, it vaguely seemed to ring a bell. But I didn't take it seriously. I threw it away. So let's forget it. What happened? To make you change your mind. My wife happened. Oh. You mean about Colin, though, don't you? Oh, do I? She'd have rang up last night, said they both resigned together. Oh. Oh. No, I can't do it. You don't give a damn thing away, do you? Resignation or dismissal, that was the choice you offered him, wasn't it? If you dismissed him and he appealed, then it would have come out, wouldn't it? You had two previous warnings already. That's right. Now, let's talk about something else, shall we, all right? Only, I hope you'll believe this. I like Colin a lot. He's got some marvellous qualities, so I think it's desperately sad. Hmm. Anyway, while you are here, what I really wanted to say was, I've been making a few phone calls to see if any of the training colleges have got any course places left. I, I knew it was getting very, very late for applying this year, so I hope you'll forgive me taking the liberty. Hmm. It's a pretty depressing picture, I'm afraid. Manchester, no. Liverpool, no. Leeds, no. Birmingham, no. North London, no. It's more or less the same all over the country. Oh. Well, thanks for trying. So it's been such a waste of time. Almost, but not quite. Out of the whole country, there is one place left on one course, and by a sheer stroke of luck, the principal's someone I was at school with. I know it's rank string-pulling, but if you want it. Well, one place in the whole country? <laughs> Where? Dover. Dover? Dover. What did you say? What do you think I said? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. What did you say? Thanks, but no thanks. Of course. Why? What do you mean, why? I wouldn't dream of going that far away from you. You know it. It's over 300 miles, you know. Well, there are things called letters and telephones. And you'd have the college holidays, longer holidays than I get, so don't just... Jean, you're not serious, are you? If she's willing to use her connections to get you the only place at college going vacant in the entire country, that is some compliment. You're mad. You are if you don't take it. Oh, I see. You've gone off me. You want to get me out of the way? Shift over. No, listen. Hang on. I love you, Tom. I love you. So much so that I don't know how I'll do it. I don't know how I'll bear to live without you, but I will. I'll put up with it if, at the end of it, you have a training and a qualification that'll last you forever, for the rest of your life. And as for money... Well, we can live without a stair carpet a little while longer. <laughs> Think, Tom. How many lives have we got to do something with? Another one. Don't. You can't. Don't waste it.
Come on, Billy. Seven eight two three to Hartley. I'm the waste ground off Valley Road for Sally Bottle. I think he's dead and I need an ambulance.